¿Qué pasó? ¿Por qué me ¿Qué pasó? ¿Por qué, ¿Por qué lo están deteniendo? ¿Por qué lo están? ¿Por qué lo están deteniendo? ¿Quién es la verga usted? This cell phone video shows hitmen working for a Mexican drug cartel, disguised as FGE agents, abducting the brother of an actual FGE agent in Baja, California. In the city of Mexicali, which is the capital city of the Mexican state of Baja, California, the drug cartels rule over the civilians with an iron fist. It seems as if nobody is safe from the cartel in Mexicali, and they often have their hitmen kill citizens, journalists, politicians, and even federal agents. The United States Embassy in Mexico released a travel advisory in April 2021, alerting travelers to avoid the Mexicali Valley until further notice due to the heightened possibility of violence between rival cartel factions. Ramses Zotarain Hernandez was on vacation visiting his brother Rigoberto Zotarain Hytrum, who is a prosecutor with the Attorney General's office. Because Rigoberto is an FGE agent, and is responsible for prosecuting several prominent cartel members, the hitmen targeted his brother and planned this abduction to a T. In Spanish, FGE stands for Fiscalia General del Estado and their officers work directly for the state attorney general's office. Rigoberto is a prominent and effective FGE agent, and is responsible for prosecuting cartel members and bringing them to justice. During the afternoon of Monday, May 30, 2022, Ramses Zotarain Hernandez was driving his GMC Sierra pickup truck through the Mission del Valle neighborhood with his wife in the passenger seat. A white Chevrolet Silverado pickup truck, disguised as a law enforcement vehicle, approached Mr. Hernandez's vehicle and motioned for him to pull over for a traffic stop. After Hernandez complied with what he thought was a lawful order, a number of armed men exited the Silverado, wearing ballistic plate carriers with the letters FGE on them. They identified themselves as state officers of the Attorney General's office. The armed men were wearing face coverings and carrying firearms. They demanded that Ramses exit his vehicle and come with them. Ramses was suspicious of the men and refused to exit his vehicle, asking for more details about why he had to come with them. The armed men claimed they had an arrest warrant for him. His wife also wasn't buying the fact that the armed men were actual FGE agents, and she exited the vehicle trying to talk further with some of the men about why they wanted Ramses to come with them on the sidewalk nearby. When they did not answer, she began recording the interaction on her cell phone. Face video is some of the footage she recorded. The armed men sped away from the area once they got Ramses inside their vehicle. The wife promptly called the real local authorities and they came to the scene right away. After interviewing the wife, the officers asked their FGE colleagues for details about their current operations. The FGE made clear to them that they had no agents executing an arrest warrant in that part of Mexicali that afternoon. Ramses's wife immediately posted the video that she recorded online. It soon became apparent that the men in the video were not real law enforcement officers and that Ramses had been abducted. On the morning after the abduction, human remains were discovered in the eastern outskirts of Mexicali, on the highway near the small town of Los Manantiales. Officers were called to the scene and evidence was collected from the area. The body of the deceased was left half-naked and had visible evidence of gunshot wounds. After family members were notified and came to the morgue to claim the body, authorities officially announced that the deceased remains belonged to Ramses Eriberto Zotarain Hernandez. The Forensic Medical Service stated the cause of death was a gunshot wound to the skull. The medical report stated there was also evidence of his body being dragged across concrete, most likely from a vehicle, as well as other injuries that suggest a process of torture. The day after Ramses was abducted, 
the police received a report that a similar pickup truck was spotted abducting another person in Mexicali. This time a man named Jose Felix was kidnapped from a tire shop. The men who kidnapped him were seen driving a white four-door Dodge Ram pickup truck and officers were told to be on the lookout for the vehicle. The pickup truck was then spotted in the Ferrocarril neighborhood by officers who gave chase. Eventually, the pickup truck stopped in a Walmart parking lot and one of the gunmen got out the vehicle and took the officers on a foot pursuit. Some of the officers chased the man through the parking lot, while others continued to chase the driver in a high-speed chase. Both the gunman in the car and the one in the parking lot were apprehended and the kidnapping victim was freed. It is believed that these kidnappings are the result of a threat that was made by the Sinaloa cartel, who left a banner in Mexicali a few weeks prior to the kidnappings. The banner was addressed to the state governor and the head of the attorney general's office. The banner specifically said, Attention Mexicali, you have one month to release our boss, Goldie, or we will keep killing people. And we will kidnap public officials who are on our payroll, like Prosecutor Capio Sanchez and the Governor Marina del Pila. Fucking bunch of traitors. They are going to get fucked up. They are where they are because of us. The disappearances will continue. Sincerely, Los 80s. The banner alleges that the head of the state attorney general's office, FGE agent Ricardo Ivan Carpio Sanchez, and Governor, Marina del Pilar Avila Olmeda, are on Los Russos cartel's personal payroll. They are threatening to kill more people and kidnap public officials such as the prosecutor and governor if their boss, Goldie, isn't released from custody within one month. Goldie, whose real name is Rubian Benitez Ponce, was recently arrested on weapons charges after being pulled over for speeding, and is still in police custody. The cartel released another banner a few weeks later that said, Attention, to all the fucking corrupt and traitorous government people of Mexicali, especially you Zarate and Valors and all the other municipal officers from El Poniente. Release our boss Goldie or everyone is going to get fucked up like those from SLRC. Sincerely, Los 80s. In this message, they mention those that got fucked up in San Luis Rio, Colorado, or SLRC, which a nearby city in Sonora, Mexico. This is a reference to the April 19, 2022 shooting which killed two police officers. They also call out police officers who specifically work in the Poniente neighborhood of Mexicali which is located in the southern section of the city. Unfortunately, it seems as if the cartels have made promises to kill people and they aren't afraid to make good on those promises. The Mexicali government is doing a terrible job at protecting their citizens because they are either inadequate, corrupt, or too fearful to end the cartel violence. If I was born in Baja, California, I would have tried to cross the US border by the age of 9 to get away from these cartels. I would much rather take my chances with a border patrol agent than a member of the cartel. Not only that, but I wouldn't even come back to visit. This place seems dangerous and I'm not trying to die. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please make sure that you like and subscribe to my channel to see more content like this. Sometimes I release videos that take me very little effort but this video was not one of them. I busted my ass to make this video and I hope you enjoyed it. If you're watching this from Baja California, I'm praying for you. Thanks again.